In 2012, two years from now, London is holding the Olympic Games. And each year that the Olympic Games take place, the organisers choose a mascot, something that will symbolise their games. And for the last 30 years, they have been little fluffy animals, which are really of no interest at all to chemists. And nobody can remember what they are either. But this time, the London organisers have revealed their mascots, which you can see on the screen behind me, which are made of steel. Their story is that two droplets of steel fell from the roof of the Olympic Stadium and miraculously turned into these two creatures who can have adventures. But the interest for the chemist is in the steel, not the creatures. I think it's a great message. We're now getting some science into what's an exciting event and will make people ask all sorts of interesting questions. And if you look at the figures in detail, they have webcams for eyes and all sorts of things. So there's a lot of science in them and there may be quite a lot of opportunity for us to explain different aspects. But today we're going to focus on the steel. Steel is an alloy of iron. And there are lots of different steels, as I'll explain in a minute. But the problem starts when you make iron. As you probably know, that in prehistoric times, people made tools out of stone. And then along came more technologically advanced tribes who could make things out of bronze. And then they could start making swords and things out of iron. The real problem with early swords that were made out of iron was that they broke very easily. And you can imagine, it's slightly embarrassing. You're in the middle of a fight and suddenly your sword breaks and you're in quite a vulnerable position if the other guy's sword hasn't broken too. And the reason why iron breaks is because it's really quite a soft material. And over the years, people have found different ways of treating iron. When you first make iron out of iron oxide, it comes out as a rather unappetizing lump. This is a piece that Neil and Pete made in one of their thermite reactions. Talk me through what's going on, mate. So instantly the thermite reaction starts, and you can see that it's so hot it's burnt a hole through the bottom of that terracotta flower pot. But if we go in close now, Brady, you can see all that really quite nice molten iron. And you can see it's mucky, and generally it looks not very like the iron that you would expect. And originally what people did was they would take this iron and heat it up and bang it for ages and ages to make things like horseshoes. And this is quite an old horseshoe. It's rusted a bit. But the point about horseshoes is that when they were banging them, they removed all of the carbon that was dissolved in the iron. The carbon comes from the coke, the coal that is used to make the iron. They just went on banging the iron on an anvil till you got rid of all the carbon. And in that case, you could easily bend it to form the horseshoe and you got a very reproducible material. The breakthrough when making steel was, came when people realized the way to get it right was to remove all the carbon and then add some in. And this was discovered in, I think, the early 19th century by an English industrialist called Bessemer who discovered if you blow oxygen through the liquid iron, it will remove all the carbon. The carbon burns before the iron and so then you end, with, end up with pure iron and you can add just the right amount of carbon and get good steel. The difficulty is that you make good knives, but the knives rust. And so you have to keep on cleaning it, otherwise it rusts and eventually will rust completely away. And the final technical breakthrough came when people discovered that if you added other metals, nickel, chromium to the iron and carbon in steel, you could then make stainless steel, like the spoon, which stays shiny whatever you do. And so now we have a huge number of different steels, and each steel is used for something different. 
because each of them have different properties. And if you don't have stainless steel, you either have to clean it all the time or paint it, which is why on some of the old bridges that were built in the 19th century, like the famous fourth railway bridge in Scotland, people have to paint it all the time to stop it rusting. But I'm sure that the Olympic mascots are made out of stainless steel because it's shiny and nice and it'll be more fun to watch.